I, of course, Nader, and uh, this wonderful night for him. Now, this is a great night for a lot of reasons, and I'm going to touch on just four. The first is, of course, for Nader himself. What a story of the American dream. Nader was raised and attended school right here in this district. His family, he grew up with seven siblings here in Yonkers, a diverse community, and uh, his father was an executive chef, came from Jordan. He's the first Jordanian American elected to the assembly. time ago, in, in 1965, but Nader's mom, raise your hand, mom, you did so quite a job. Yeah. 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 Um, she raised all of the kids, eight kids, listen to this, six of the children became successful doctors or attorneys or educators and two daughters are successful in education. Now, Nader went to Yonkers High School, Westchester Community College, Lehman, Fairley Dickinson, Fordham, and Pace. And after working his way through college, he became an attorney, and he helped individuals who were wrong. He always worked, he wasn't working for some big shot corporation. He was helping average folks here uh, in Yonkers. And uh, he's done so many other things. He's a great lecturer. Um, he, he helped him uh, became a great principal. He's in our New York State militia. He's a trustee on the Board of Elections. It's amazing what he has done. So this is a great night for Nader because he started, oh, and, well, I'll get to that in a minute. He started off poor and he, uh, an immigrant. We love immigrants in New York. I've always said, <laughs> said this. I don't know how many of you saw the response that Peter Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi and I gave to Trump. But you know what I said there? I'm going to say it tonight. I wish we believe the symbol of America should be the Statue of Liberty, not the war. talks badly of immigrants. Look at the success of the Zayich family and what they have done for themselves. So I want to say, so Nader climbed the ladder. No one plucked him out, wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. It's a great night for Nader because he got here the old-fashioned way. He earned it. And it's a great night for Nader's family. I mentioned Jamila. Are all of his, he had five daughters, wow. <laughs> Samya, Lana, Hannah, Teresa. Mary. Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, I left out, right. Samya, Lana, right, and Mary. Two sons-in-law, and I hear you have your first grandson. How old? I. something in common. I became a grandfather for the first time six and a half weeks ago. <laughs> now, so Nader's family, it's a great day for them too. We all know how our families give us our values. They back us up. They're always there. And, and they put up with being in public life, which Nader's been in for a long time. I'll never forget the time. My daughter had her fifth birthday party, and I was there with a clown, you know. And a man from a, a pastor of a local church called me up. And he said, Senator, we have our Easter pageant tonight, but the Con Ed, the electricity company, has shut off the electricity, the church is locked, and 300 seniors are standing outside in the cold, ready to get in. I said, uh, he said, you've got to come over here. The Con Ed man came here, but he's not helping us. So I left the door birthday party, went over there. It took me about two hours. We got to open the door of the church. The people saw their Easter pageant. 
My daughter is now 29, but she reminds me all the time that I missed her fifth birthday. And our families put up with us, but our families also, Nader, as you know, have our backs. So a few years ago, I was talking to a gentleman, and I, you know, came over and said, well, I didn't quite recognize him, and my wife is pulling on my suit jacket. And I said, dear, I'm talking to the man, can't you see? And she says to me, don't you remember him? He insulted you 15 years ago. <laughs> so our families are always there for us, and they in this wonderful, large, and successful Saich family share in Nader's success. It's a great day for his family. It's also a great day for the residents of this 90th Assembly District, so well represented by Shelley before you. I know this district, I've been here many, many, many times. It's a diverse district. People of all different backgrounds, religions, races, creeds, colors, genders, or sexual orientation, you name it. But what the thing that everyone has in common is what they're struggling and working hard to do is create a decent life for their families and hope and pray and prepare that they'll even have a better life, their children will even have a better life than they did, just like your family did. And so this is the kind of district where people don't complain a whole lot. They work hard, they do their jobs, but they need help, they need services. Whether it's good schools or safe streets, nice parks, good transportation so you can get to work, good jobs. And you need someone who has the skill to both talk and work with people of every different background, but get things done. Nader's just that type of person. He's had so much experience, been so successful in so many things he's done. And growing up and living here, he knows all the different types of people who work and live here. And so it's a great day for the 90th AD because you have gotten great representation now that Nader, or continue to get great representation, now that Nader is our new assembly member. And finally, it's a great day for the United States of America. And people who were born elsewhere appreciate this almost more than Americans do. It's a cold November night, election night. It's 5.30, 6 o'clock. People get off the train, off the buses, out of their cars, coming home from work. They're hungry. Maybe want to make dinner for the family. Maybe you just want to go home and sit in that cold November night in your favorite chair and watch your favorite TV show. But no, the citizens of Yonkers and New York and America, in quiet dignity, line up at the polling place, wait their turn, go inside, do their duty, and the next morning, we all abide by the results. There are no tanks in the streets or rioting. It's an amazing thing about America that very few other countries have had for so long a period of time. Well, it didn't have to be that way. And I'll conclude by telling a little story. Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers, we didn't have any founding mothers in those days, but Benjamin Franklin, was sitting in a coffee house in Philadelphia the day after they wrote the Constitution. And they didn't have Starbucks, so they called them coffee houses in those days. And one of the leading matrons of Philadelphia went over to him and said, Dr. Franklin, what have you gentlemen created in that hall over there? She pointed to the Constitution Hall. He rifled back at her, he said, Madam, we have created a republic, if you can keep it. Now, what did he mean by that? The founding Fathers did many amazing things. They didn't do everything so well. Back in 1789, when you founded the Constitution, you had to be a white, Protestant, male, property owner to vote. Any white, male, Protestant property owners in this audience? No. One back there, so one person in this audience could vote. But. They did a lot of amazing things, too, for all the problems. And so what did they mean? What, did, what were they worried about when they said, when he said, Franklin, a republic if you can keep it? The historians tell us two things. 
first. They were worried whether people would participate in this brand new thing, a democracy, that had not been on the face of the earth for centuries. They knew human nature. They knew every one of us is busy with our families, with our jobs, with the ups and downs in life that God visits on every single one of us. So would people even have time or interest in participating? And second, they worried about who would run for office. They were worried that the people who would run for office would put themselves first for either money, financial gain, power, ego. In those days, they called them scoundrels. We call them that today. We have a whole bunch in Washington. Well, look at this beautiful auditorium here tonight. It's a cold January night. But it is filled with people of all different backgrounds and all walks of life but who are participating in our democracy and participate in their beautiful communities. And second, look who we put in office. Not a scoundrel. Not even someone who in the more Italian neighborhoods in Yonkers they would say is at cements. Just okay. We have put in one of our best. So if Benjamin Franklin were looking down on this auditorium tonight, or George Washington, or Thomas Jefferson, they smile. This is the democracy they wanted. So God bless Nader. God bless the Syage family. God bless the members of this 90th Assembly District. And God bless the United States.